Melbourne celebrates after defeating the second wave. 28 days straight without a new COVID case and the city is coming to life. Special coverage coming up. Also families back together at last as more border walls come down. But WA is still locking us out. Daniel Andrews' hotel quarantine texts and emails finally made public. Police on alert for violence at our Bayside beaches after a deadly train station attack on a young tradie. Detectives release new security footage in a desperate bid to catch a Hawthorne sex predator. Why they're so worried he might what he might do. And traffic jams as shoppers cash in on Black Friday sales. Live from Melbourne. 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. Melbourne is coming back to life, celebrating the end of the second wave after 28 days without a new COVID case. That's the scientific measure for the elimination of the virus. But we're being warned it's not the time to drop our guard. After a long, hard winter, it was the day we'd been waiting for. 112 days in lockdown, fighting a second wave that's now been crushed. I think it's fantastic news. We've all got, got together and been able to do this. It's, it's, it's a fantastic thing. Of all the milestones we've marked during the pandemic, today's is big. 28 days with no new cases. That's two life cycles of the virus a sign we've successfully eliminated it. I think it's fantastic. They've done an amazing job, really have. I think it's great, but um, don't forget it's still out there. The data suggests that's true. Virus fragments have been found in wastewater at Corio. While it's likely an old case, extra testing is now underway at Norlane, but that's just a precaution. We can be confident that we don't have community transmission right here, right now within Victoria. The big question now, why are masks still needed? Victoria, the only place in the nation where there's still mandatory inside. We could be in a position with Adelaide and their outbreak under control that the government reviews that yet again. There might still be places like public transport or cinemas, who knows. There'll come a time when we're able to relax those measures further. But I see them in many respects as a, a pretty effective insurance policy against the inevitable one case or small outbreak that, if unchecked, can become something much, much bigger. A policy that's paying off. Ironically, because of the lack of social distancing and the complacency in Western Australia uh, that we're all guilty of, me included, uh, WA is probably at more risk of COVID now than Victoria is. Despite that, WA remains the only border still shut to Victorians and while the virus might be gone, its impact is still being felt. Unfortunately, we've now got um, three staff members in tears um, and we won't be opening for the remainder of the day. Jess and Lisa Bilston were forced to tearfully close their Doncaster cafe early after copping abuse from a customer unhappy his usual order wasn't available due to COVID supply shortages. I was just so broken that I said, I can't do this, we're closing. They're now pleading with Victorians to go easy on one another. So just, you know, be kind. Melbournians are making the most of our victory over COVID on a warm Friday night. Jody Lee is at St Kilda Beach and Jody, a big crowd is building there. It is slowly building, Mitch, and it's nights like these that will be the real test for Victorians moving forward. Chief Health Officer Professor Brett Sutton today confirmed there's no community transmission across the state, but he urged us to remain vigilant, particularly in large gatherings. Uh, Professor Sutton took to Twitter today to thank Victorians for their efforts enduring the toughest of years to allow us to arrive at this milestone moment. He promised a brighter 2021 with restrictions restrictions set to ease further later this month. But Professor Sutton reiterated the need for our testing numbers to remain high. He said ongoing surveillance will be key to managing any future outbreaks. Mitch? Jody Lee at St Kilda, thank you. Restaurants and hotels are also busy as the city celebrates. Jade Vincent is at South Bank this evening. And Jade, there's a feeling of optimism for summer. 
Mitch, there's a buzz. It's starting to look and feel like a normal Friday night here along South Bank. People are making the most of this warm weather, weather quickly filling up bars and restaurants to grab a drink. And certainly after today's achievement, there's a sense of confidence that we can have a COVID normal summer. The city is gearing up for Monday when 25% of office workers are set to return. And today we learned of a plan to encourage visitors back to our famous laneways. Our city is being revived with the sights and sounds of its regular heartbeat. Seven and a half million dollars will be spent employing 160 artists and musicians to reinvigorate 40 laneways, starting with Russell Place. Vital support for mural artist Caffeine, whose work dried up when the pandemic hit. And I never really thought my hometown would be a hometown in distress. I'm stoked. I've got this beautiful spot to paint. It is about jobs for all of the cafes, restaurants and bars that will be able to welcome more customers in because they've been attracted by this project. Venues like Gin Palace will be able to extend drink service out to a designated area in the laneway. We want to draw more people down to Russell Place. Russell Place is an iconic uh, laneway in Melbourne. Started with Gin Palace 23 years ago. It was a bin alleyway. And like, look at us now. And look at how far we've come. Three weeks out from school finishing up, students will be able to celebrate what's been their toughest year yet. I'll be so excited um, and um, proud of myself. Yeah. Ivanhoe East Primary School had planned a virtual send-off for their grade sixes. Now parents will be able to see them graduate on a stage in the playground. It means so much because they've supported me, supported me the whole year through remote learning and at school especially. We'll have a special picnic because we've got the right number of people who'll be able to come onto the school grounds. School holidays just got a whole lot better too. Thousands of campers will be able to keep their summer tradition and pitch their tents along the Mornington Peninsula foreshore from January 2. Jade Vincent, 7 News. And another state border has reopened to Victorians with travel to Tasmania resuming today. Georgia Commonsoli is in Port Melbourne this evening where a spirit of Tasmania is about to depart, Georgia. Mitch, the spirit of Tassie behind me will leave for Davenport in just a few minutes. It's another sign that life is getting back to normal for Victorians. And Hobart Airport today, there were plenty of emotional reunions between loved ones who have been kept apart for eight months while Tassie closed their border. So many families have been kept apart by this pandemic. About 700 Victorians were expected to arrive in Tassie today with eight flights into Launceston and seven into Hobart. And there were plenty tears of joy. It's been a long time since we've seen each other, so um... <laughs> yeah, I've just been waiting for the borders to open up ever since because my whole family's in Tassie. <laughs> Dylan's first day today too. <laughs> So for Victorians hoping to get into Queensland, their borders will reopen to us on Tuesday. Soon it will only be Western Australia that will remain cut off to Victoria. Mitch. Georgia Commonsoli at Port Melbourne, thank you. The inquiry into the bungled hotel quarantine system has released more evidence just weeks before it's due to make its final report. It includes texts and emails from the Premier showing he was briefed about the Defence Force working with police on enforcing hotel security. As the hotel quarantine inquiry resumed... I shall commence, Madam Chair. Yes, please. The Premier was in Parliament being pressed on the bungled program but declined to answer every question. It's my intention to await that report. Dozens of new documents were handed to the inquiry, including a new submission from the Premier, who has always maintained... I'm glad you mentioned the use of ADF. I don't believe ADF support was on offer. And ADF support has been provided in very limited circumstances in New South Wales not to provide security as such, but to provide transportation. However, his newly revealed media briefing notes from March 27 state Victoria Police will work closely with the ADF to determine if any other support is required, including in relation to enforcement. But in a new affidavit tendered to the inquiry, the Premier said, I have no present recollection of the briefing that I received immediately before the press conference. The board's final report is due four days before Christmas, finally providing long-sought answers on the failure to keep the virus contained. A quarantine system 
that does not achieve that um, objective has clearly failed. Chanel Vella, 7 News. Police have revealed they'd become increasingly concerned about a rise in crime around Seaford in the lead-up to the murder of a young tradie. Tegan Doling is there this evening and, Tegan, the violence has been escalating over the past few months. Mitch, these hot conditions combined with large crowds have the police on edge. They've confirmed that crime has been escalating, a lot of the problems being caused by teenagers illegally drinking. And because of the shocking murder this week, they are flooding the area to reassure the community they're safe. Shock, devastation and fear is flowing through Seaford. It's just really upsetting that something like this could happen in our community. 26-year-old tradie Cam Smith was stabbed to death in an unprovoked attack near the Seaford train station. I've got a son. My oldest is the same. I'm sorry. My oldest is the same age and um, could have just been anybody, you know? Could have been them. The tragedy also hitting our hardened front line. It affects us uh, too and, it, and I had some conversations with my people that they were struggling with it. Police will swarm the foreshore and train station to try and combat a rise in crime. 13 year olds heading to the beach drinking, it's a, it's a problem. It's definitely escalating, um, it's getting uh, much, you know, much more worrying as a parent myself. I have an 18 year old son. We've had robberies, we've had police assaulted, um, we've had um, the incident the other night of course which led to the sad death of that young man. 19 year old Jack Ledland fronted court today charged with murder. He was also involved in a crash which killed two of his friends in Cranbourne last year. A 21-year-old woman is also in custody. A 17-year-old has been released on bail. The court heard CCTV will play a crucial role in this investigation. Everything that unfolded was caught on security cameras across the road. The second teenager, a 17-year-old, is facing charges including a fray and committing an offence while on bail. As the floral shrine grows, so too the level of anxiety. I've actually phoned a real estate agent this morning to um, have my house appraised. I'm moving. I'm out of here. Tegan Dolling, 7 News. Police are racing to track down a sex predator in Melbourne's east before he strikes again. New security camera video reveals the extent he went to as he stalked a woman, following her along one street, then tracking her to another before he attacked. It's the chilling moment a sex predator stalks his victim moments before his premeditated attack. She walks along Glenferry Road around one o'clock on Sunday morning. The 25-year-old becomes aware and in an attempt to escape, she crosses the road. But he doesn't stop. Returning to his car, he follows her along Burwood Road, pouncing as she walks by Henry Street. <laughs> The assault has left a community traumatised. One woman even moved suburbs after Jill Ma's death. Now she fears there's another monster like him around. It's just frightening, yeah. I just wouldn't expect it from this area as well because I used to live on the other side of town near Brunswick when that Julia Ma thing happened. And that's why I moved over here and then to hear that it's happened here it just gives me shivers. Now others are too scared to walk the streets after dark. I'll know not to go out at night by myself at that time now. Excuse my friends but he's a piece of shit. It's too traumatising for her as well. She's, she's not going to be able to walk around the streets now by herself. It's going to affect her for the rest of her life. It's disgusting. The attacker is described as 183 centimetres tall, short brown hair and has a heavy build with a pot belly. It's now been five days since the violent attack. Police fear the longer the predator remains on the run, the more likely he'll strike again and the more violent he'll become. It's just frightening. Cassie Zervos, 7 News. For the first time, Donald Trump says he will leave the White House in January if Congress confirms his election loss. Certainly I will. Certainly I will. And you know that. The president is still claiming the election was rigged and is still clashing with reporters. You're just a lightweight. Don't talk to me that way. Don't talk to... I'm the president of the United States. Don't ever talk to the president that way. China has fired a new and damaging shot in its trade war with Australia. It's slapped massive tariffs on our wine exports, worth more than $1.2 billion a year. It's the latest in an increasingly bitter breakdown of trade, China launching swift and savage tariffs. This is a very distressing time for many hundreds 
of Australian wine producers. Ranging from 107 to 212 per cent, pushing up a $20 bottle of Aussie wine to $60. To get this sudden interim decision we found devastating. Shipments will slow or stop immediately. It's our biggest overseas wine market, almost 40% of exports. Beijing claims Australia is dumping wine, selling it cheaper in China than in Australia, undercutting Chinese producers. Our government says those claims are false, the tariffs grossly unfair. It is wrong. But not unexpected, with China punishing Australia for political reasons, like our support for Hong Kong, an inquiry into COVID-19 and moves to counter Chinese agents and influence. They've already hit exports of beef, coal and sugar, among others, all despite a free trade agreement worth $240 billion. Among the big losers, Treasury Wine Estates, owner of Penfolds and Wolf Blass, it shares down almost 13% today, before calling a trading halt. There might be some small upside for Australian consumers while we most definitely won't see a price drop. Some of the wines that have been in short supply because so much of it was sent to China will now be a little bit easier to get hold of. Evan Batten, 7 News. Back home and Victoria is in the grip of a heat wave. Jane Bunn joins us now. Jane, how hot and when do we get some relief? Oh, Mitch, Melbourne has just had a hottest day since January and it is even hotter further north. In the city, we started cool, it was 10 degrees, but by lunchtime it had jumped right up to 30 and it kept going, finally peaking at 36. Geelong was different. A lunchtime sea breeze meant it was only 22 then, but that didn't last heading into the mid-30s as well. Further north, it is already extreme and tomorrow could be record breaking. Mildura's record is 45.5 and tomorrow's forecast to reach 45. All these towns could go close to or even exceed their hottest November day. Here in the city tonight, we are staying quite warm until a cool change arrives tomorrow. So it is a hot one if you're headed out this evening and a tricky one if you're after a good night's sleep, Mitch. I certainly am. Thank you, Jane. Australia's off to a flyer in the one day in Sydney. Tim Watson, India are already frustrated. Mitch, it was a captain's knock from Aaron Finch that has the Aussies on top, although it was far from conventional. The skipper steering his side to a massive first innings total. And he picks it up beautifully. At least get a couple, but it's the first hundred of the summer. It's the first one for Aaron Finch at the SCG as well. And it's a well, the highlights coming up shortly. And I'm Mike Tyson ahead of his big comeback this weekend. We'll catch up with him. You won't want to miss what he has to say, Mitch. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Tim. Melbourne's Black Friday sales have unleashed crowds and congestion. Christy Mayer has details. Mitch, it's been a remarkable return for retail, forcing traffic to back up for kilometres. I'll have all the details live from Chadston next. Also coming up, a health warning for travellers heading to Gippsland. Rebellion in the ranks, the army under fire from its own over the Afghanistan outrage. And see what happened when a woman went on a rampage in Aldi's alcohol aisle. Seven News brought to you by Industry Super Funds. Pretty soon the amount of super paid on top of our wages will go up. And up. And up. And up. All the way to 12% guaranteed. That extra money will make a big difference when I retire. Put my feet up. You see, your future is even more super. are offering you a life-changing amount of money. The champions are back. 160000 dollars $250,000. Who will risk it all? It's really tough. Um, we don't just give you the money. To be Australia's greatest quiz champion. This is the biggest game ever. This is the grand final. Beat the Chasers. Sunday at 7 on 7.
The Good Guys Black Friday sale is on now. $150 off this Bosch washer, $100 off this Samsung phone, 25% off these Sonos soundbars, $218 off this Dyson V10 Animal Plus. While stocks last, only at The Good Guys. Is that your dog? It's the neighbour's dog. Will my insurance cover this? Budget Direct would have provided you with temporary accommodation for up to a year while they repaired it. Budget Direct. Insurance solved. At Officeworks, we're always keeping our low prices in... Check! Not just for Black Friday, but every day. Plus, if you find a lower price on an identical stocked item, we'll beat it by 5%. Enjoy more family time this summer. Take the night off with Hungry Jack's Family Bundle. Two Whoppers, two cheeseburgers, four small chips, four drinks, ten nuggets and sauce, only $24.95 at Hungry Jack's. I like a bar of chocolate, please. Happy birthday, Mum. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Harvey Norman, Big Friday. Big deal store-wide, one day only. Save $30 on the SodaStream Jet Drink Maker, now only $39. That's nearly half price. Hisense King Size 65-inch 4K Smart TV. Hot price, only $895. This silver Hisense side-by-side -side fridge is great value at just $998. Stores open late tonight with more Big Friday deals, plus 60 months interest-free with bonus gift card. At Harvey Norman, do not miss out. Go! An urgent health warning has been issued for the Gippsland area after Ross River virus was detected in mosquitoes around 90 Mile Beach. Anyone suffering joint pain, a headache, fever, rash or fatigue is urged to get tested. Shoppers are expected to spend billions of dollars this weekend as retailers slash prices for Black Friday. Christy Mayer joins us now from Chadston. And Christy, we haven't seen a crowd like this for months. Mitch Chadson is expecting half a million people through the doors here this week, most of them visiting today and across the weekend. Around 250 stores here are partaking in the Black Friday sales, offering discounts of up to 70%. So the centre has extended its trading hours until midnight tonight to help shoppers enjoy the sales more safely. Cars snaking down the Monash freeway for kilometres. The destination, Chadston. So I just bought a couple of things for my mum, my sister and my dad. It's a good way to stimulate the economy at the moment. As retailers everywhere threw open the doors for the Black Friday sales. In 2018, it, it recorded $400 million. 2019 escalated quickly to $2.9 billion and we expect it to reach as high as $5 billion this year. So we got up to 50% off all of our major brands um, and that's running across Adidas, Nike, Doc Martens, Vans, Converse. Inside Melbourne Central, sites we haven't seen in months. Crowds of shoppers on the hunt for a bargain. The people are intending to spend at least as much as they did last year, if not a little bit more. Department store Maya is offering 50% off homewares, 40% off a range of men's and women's wear and savings of up to 30% on fragrances and beauty. There are also big savings at electrical superstore JB Hi-Fi of up to 50% off. All Manchester at Sheridan is slashed by 40% and leisure giant Nike has 20% off store-wide. Some big name brands are offering extra cash back on top of the savings too. Shopback will refund consumers 10% of their spend from Amazon and Sephora and 15% from Adidas. It's so exciting, Christy, to have uh, people back in the city and coming back in strong numbers is, uh, is exceptional. The sales will continue over the next four days. Christy Mayer, 7 News. Brimbank Council has expressed concern over the decision to dump toxic soil from the Westgate Tunnel project into landfill at Ravenhall. It's causing calling for the state government to reconsider. We'll continue to, to work through the local council with the local councils and their communities whilst the uh, final uh, site is identified. The council says it fears for families who live close by. Australia's Chief of Defence is under fire following the damning war crimes report. A retired Special Forces commander says it's disgusting he and his colleagues will be stripped of special awards. 
At the place considered sacred ground by Australian veterans, retired commando Heston Russell launches a new attack. And that is one of the most disgusting demonstrations of senior leadership that has made me very disappointed um, to call myself a military veteran. A stinging assessment of the Chief of the Defence Force after moves to revoke unit awards in the wake of the damning Brereton war crimes report. To strip all over 3,000 Special Forces personnel for the action of 19 is not only disgusting, it's un-Australian. If we knew then what we know now, uh, the unit would not have received or been put forward for a meritorious unit citation. Despite alleging Special Forces soldiers murdered 39 Afghans, the report largely clears the military top brass of any wrongdoing. But Heston Russell believes as commander of all forces in Afghanistan, the general should lose his distinguished service cross. It's important um, that not only is there accountability in the Defence Forces um, for individual alleged acts, but also um, in the chain of command. Refusing to be drawn on whether he should resign, Lieutenant General Burr today confirmed that 13 serving members of the Special Air Service Regiment implicated in the report now face the sack. Issued with termination notices, they have 14 days to respond. Rob Scott, 7 News. Staff at an Aldi in the UK could do little but watch as a woman smashed hundreds of bottles of alcohol. She remained silent as she dragged bottles of wine and spirits off the shelves while horrified customers watched on. What is she doing? Police finally moved in and arrested the woman. She was taken to hospital. Why she did it remains a mystery. We've got a warning for commuters next. There's train trouble on the way. Two big disruptions for major lines. Details are ahead. Also more trouble for the woman at the centre of a COVID checkpoint clash. Her business has been targeted by a fire bomber. Why there are questions and delays over the 33 million doses of the Oxford COVID vaccine supposed to be heading our way. And how two minutes made this Australian painting the most expensive in our history. Do you want to know how it's going to end? We should, it's a good story. You're talking about an armed robbery. I'm not going to lose you too. I love you. Nothing will ever change that. He thinks that I'm into you. Crazy, huh? Totally. I have a son. I'm looking for the stewards. I told him to stay away. He shouldn't be here. He's gonna die in there. But he is a cop! You really thought you'd get away with it? Constable Thorne. Hold your breath for the heart-stopping season final of Home and Away. Monday at 7 on 7. Go full Christmas for less with water hammocks. Wahoo Mega Pool Packs and a giant inflatable water park this Saturday only at Aldi. Creating something that feels just right, that's an art. It needs just the right amount of room to move. Elegant lines, a unique flow, precisely crafted and beautifully finished. So when you try it, well, you just know. All new Mazda CX-30. Everything just right. So, so. Black November in Sunday at Nick Scarly. We must clear our floor stock and discontinued lines. Lounges reduced, dining tables reduced, dining chairs reduced, and much more. Limited stock in Sunday. Black November at all Nick Scarly stores. Hurry. Guys, this has just arrived. Beautiful garment. There's a big stain on it. Hmm. Trust pink, forget hot, half a scoop cold water from Vanish. I think this is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm up for it. Pop it in the tub. Cold water. Give it a little bit of a rub. Blows my mind that it is this easy. How beautiful is this blouse? And look, no stain. For amazing results, just cold wash with Vanish Oxy Action. Dyson's most powerful intelligent vacuum now comes in a larger format, a 25% wider cleaner head and a 150% bigger bin. By Direct, from the people who made it. 
Black November ends Sunday at Nick's Gully. We must clear our floor stock and discontinued lines up to 30, 40 and 50% off. Our floor stock must go. Limited stock ends Sunday. Black November at all Nick's Gully stores. Hurry. Watch Sky Racing live, anywhere, now available on Sportsbet. A woman dragged out of her car in a clash at a COVID checkpoint has fallen victim to a fire bomber. Natalie Bonnet's beauty business was targeted when a masked man threw two Molotov cocktails into the boutique on Tuesday. The Thomastown salon was already boarded up after previous attacks. Ms Bonnet's arrest at the Calcallo checkpoint in September went viral online. Just as we get moving again, a major construction blitz over summer could see hours of delays on our major roads. And it wouldn't be Christmas without the threat of looming industrial action causing train problems. V-Line services could be disrupted from next week as maintenance workers threatening to down tools over an ongoing wage dispute. And that's not the only disruptions we're facing this summer, with the government ramping up work on our road and rail network. Helping people to get to where they need to go, spending more time with families, less time stuck in congestion. What we are doing is bringing home the bacon for all Victorians. The work will target Melbourne's growing west, shutting down major networks to upgrade train lines and motorways. The state's 45th level crossing will be removed and replaced with the Werribee Street rail bridge, with buses replacing trains between Laverton and Werribee from this Sunday. We've got uh, over 150 projects underway employing 18,000 Victorians. We're well ahead of schedule. Some of the disruptions include those headed to the surf coast should add an hour to their travel due to maintenance on the Westgate Bridge. As part of works on the M80 Ring Road, the Princess Freeway to Geelong Road inbound and outbound will be closed for six weeks, as well as the Westgate Freeway inbound, while in the north, the Edgars Road interchange will close for two weeks. And the opposition says it's too much too soon. So many people have been locked up at home for months. Uh, we need to have our public transport system running and I'd like to think that the government will be a bit sensitive about making it harder for people to get back to work. To get in and do it this way means that we can have the disruption be undertaken for shorter periods of time and get a lot more work done more quickly. The Western Roads upgrade should be finished early next year. Georgia Commons solely, 7 News. It's feared COVID deaths in America could double over the next week to 4,000 a day. In the lead up to Thanksgiving, it's been the busiest travel week in the States since the start of the pandemic. Have you got a message for America this Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'm, I hope that we all stay safe. America's leading infectious disease expert, Anthony Fauci, praising Australia's response. Australia's done a good job. You guys should be congratulated. A setback over the effectiveness of the Oxford University COVID vaccine won't stop Australia's rollout in March. New human trials have been ordered after a mix-up in the lab. So many families. Stephanie Kane is stranded in the UK with her three children, the youngest just six weeks old. It's pretty frustrating. We've had our flights booked since July. Four cancellations later, she's desperate to come home. We just want to get our lives back sorted in Australia. Stephanie is one of thousands of Aussies stuck overseas. The Prime Minister said he would have Australians home for Christmas. 26,000 wanted to come home in September. Since then, 35,000 have returned. Now another 36,000 have registered. We're Meeting um, the, the amounts that we hope to achieve by Christmas, uh, it's just that more people are looking to come home. For those unable to return, the federal government is now looking at ways to provide them with a free COVID vaccine. Our goal is to protect all Australians, no matter where they are. But a slight setback in one of the most promising candidates. <laughs> US scientists have raised concerns about the effectiveness of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. It follows a manufacturing error on doses administered during the trials. Now the company is redoing them. When you started to look closer, not everything seemed to add up. We've had strong evidence of safety 
strong evidence of effectiveness. Despite the delay, Seven News can reveal that top officials met in Canberra today and approved the rollout of the first vaccines. To go to medical professionals and possibly the elderly in March next year. Jennifer Beshwati, Seven News. Administrators have been appointed to 39 companies which are part of construction giant Grocon. They don't include companies associated with Grocon's current projects. Grocon is currently suing the New South Wales government over its Barangaroo development. An anonymous buyer has set an Australian art record by paying well over $6 million for a Brett Whiteley painting. A big price for a big canvas and a sign the local art market is defying the economic gloom. Brett Whiteley's 1975 Henri's armchair, named for Henri Matisse, was never going cheap. Only 30 people in the auction room, but they represented serious money. Bidding opened at four and a half million dollars. At four point six million dollars, I'm bid. Moving by a hundred thousand dollar increments. Make no mistake, we are selling this evening. And so they did. Two minutes later, for six point one three six million dollars, including GST and commission. Congratulations, one sold to your product. Going to a North Shore Sydney family who, understandably remain anonymous. The most ex expensive painting ever sold at auction in Australia by an Australian artist. Eclipsing the previous record of 5.4 million for Sidney Nolan's first class marksman. Before that, Whiteley, who died in 1992, was the undisputed record holder. Another of his armchair paintings sold for 3.9 million, while his Olga's sold for 3.4 million. Henri's armchair was sold by Elizabeth Evatt, widow of barrister and art dealer Clive Evatt. She says it's worth every cent and more. Cameron Price, 7 News. If you have a Powerball ticket, it might be worth checking it. Somewhere out there, someone in Melbourne is $20 million richer and they may not even know it. Details are ahead. Also, a Melbourne family's nightmare left in limbo after a violent confrontation. Soccer fans run riot in memory of Maradona. And see Bindi Irwin's heartwarming baby photo. It's time to celebrate this year's end. What a crazy 12 months it's been. With a Christmas special so big it spans the nation. All hands on deck. We can do something beautiful. Two amazing makeovers, so many festive ideas. Oh, I'm blown away. Join us for the Better Homes Christmas special next up on 7. The Rebel Biggest Black Friday Sale on now. Get 30% off all full price Adidas and Under Armour clothing, plus buy one, get one half price on all footwear. There's loads more, but be quick. Sale ends Monday. Rebel. Sport is calling. The Big W Big Sale is here. Find big deals on big brands, up to 50% off your favourite big brand products. Big W. Every day's a big day. Bring on the Christmas treats they can't keep their hands off with 25% off Breville appliances. Big W. Every day's a big day. Move with confidence at the BMW Expo Sale event with complimentary stamp duty, registration and service inclusive on selected new BMW models. Don't miss the BMW Expo on now until November 28. Book an appointment today. At ENS, it's savings frenzy time with incredible deals for six days only. Get this Bosch freestanding cooker, only $8.99. This Fisher & Paykel fridge, only $17.99. This Bosch dishwasher, only $6.99. And this Kohler toilet, just $4.99. Plus get free delivery on washers, dryers, fridges and dishwashers. And we won't be beaten on price. So visit one of our nine showrooms today or shop online and get the e &S feeling. Bring on the big days this Christmas and make loading the sleigh easy with contactless pickup, now direct to boot. Big W, every day's a big day. 
Harvey Norman Big Friday. Save $150 on this Asus Spin Laptop, now $298. Save over $500 on the Samsung 49-inch Odyssey G9 Gaming Monitor, now $2,294. Samsung Galaxy A51, now $429, save $170. Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus, now $168, save $130. Stores open late tonight with more Big Friday deals, plus 60 months interest-free with bonus gift card. Big Friday at Harvey Norman. A Diamond Creek teenager remains in a coma almost a week after a brawl in a Hillsville pub car park. His family and friends say no argument is worth what they're going through now. Ben Montgomery celebrated his 18th birthday three weeks ago. Now he's in a coma with a serious brain injury. We don't know what Ben's outcomes are going to be um, until he's woken up. The Diamond Creek teen was out with mates in Hillsville on Sunday when an argument broke out between two groups. Ben was punched in the head, his skull hitting the concrete. Two men have now been arrested. People need to keep their hands to themselves and realise that things turn really, really quickly and someone won't come home at the end of this sometimes. And you want your friend to come home, you want your son to come home. It's just not worth it. Ben has a tight-knit group of friends and a girlfriend who desperately want to visit him in hospital but can't do so due to coronavirus restrictions. Instead, they're donating money to a GoFundMe page and they're hoping others can do the same. It's his second year apprentice and he absolutely loves it. It's, it's just a shame, you know, he's not going to be able to work for a long time. Ben's mother Sally remains by his bedside. The only thing she wants is for her son to be OK. She doesn't hate anyone. She's not looking for blame. She just really wants to make sure that no one else has to go through what she and Ben are going through right now. To donate to Ben, go to our Facebook page. Estelle Greypink, 7 News. Fans of football legend Diego Maradona have clashed with police as they queued to see his casket in Argentina. Thousands lined the streets of Buenos Aires to farewell the 60-year-old they called God. An Argentinian wake for football's king. For 20 blocks, they sang tens of thousands waiting to see Maradona. His coffin draped in his nation's flag and his famous number 10, a legion of fans. Their passion explosive. Fearing they'd miss out, the crowd surged into the presidential palace. Police unleashed. Rubber bullets, tear gas and water cannon. The public viewing over before Maradona made one last trip through his city. An extraordinary procession, his casket surrounded. Like a state funeral, a farewell through the suburbs. And down the highway, closed just for him. Argentina said goodbye to the legend who carried a country, and today they carried him to a final resting place beside his parents. And in the slum where a legend was born, this, eternally, thank you. Emma Dallymore, 7 News. It looks like 2020 just became a year to remember for one Doveton local after taking out Division One in last night's $20 million Powerball draw. But who the winner is remains a mystery. The ticket was sold at Doveton News and Lotto. This is the fourth time, actually, we win the first division. And, uh, yeah, we are very excited. Ticket holders should check their numbers. Mum-to-be Bindi Irwin has posted a video from her latest sonogram. The 22-year-old says she and husband Chandler Powell can't wait to meet their beautiful daughter. Wow. You can see her heartbeat there. The baby girl is due in late March or early April. Australia has made a blazing start to the summer of cricket. Tim Watson, it was all set up by the captain. Mitch, the Aussies had a licence to thrill at the SCG as Aaron Finch goes to town on the Indian bowls, reaching triple figures. All the highlights are next. It all goes on the line for the stars in the WBBL decider. How a beer in Noosa led James Frawley to his new home at Moorabbin. And Mike Tyson not short of any confidence 
ahead of his return to the ring. Yesterday, a wizard entered New York with a case full of magical creatures. Unfortunately, some have escaped. Two Fantastic Beasts movies over two massive nights. The original tonight. The premiere tomorrow. See the whole Fantastic Beasts story starting tonight on 7. Let him go. We're trying to locate a Donnie wee boy. He married our son's widow. Got our grandson with him. You let it be known you're looking for a wee boy. I'll find you. We came to see our grandson. My boy doesn't have the answer to you. Come with us. He'd kill me. You're with me on this, right? We're right behind you. Don't start what you can't finish. Let him go. In cinemas now. Listen, do you want to know a secret? Do you promise not to tell? I, I've known a secret for a week or two. Nobody knows, just we two. Give chocolate secretly to someone you love. Pre-rinsing wastes up to 40 litres of water. Let's end this. With Finnish, if you promise to stop pre-rinsing, we'll donate 40 litres of water to those who need it most. Join the movement. Finnish. Is that your dog? It's the neighbour's dog. Will my insurance cover this? Budget Direct would have provided you with temporary accommodation for up to a year while they repaired it. Budget Direct. Insurance solved. This is the Dyson Corral straightener with manganese copper alloy plates that flex, mm. shape and gather for enhanced styling with less damage. Dyson Corral. Bye, Cocky. Bye-bye. Finally. <sighs> the way I see it, you've got two options in life. Settle for what you're given or speak up for what you deserve. Cricket. <laughs> Winter is coming. See ya. Show me DiCaprio movies. You said it, Leo. Foxtel, now with voice control. Do it, baby. It's on, mate. Make this week one to remember. Run second, third, or even fourth and get money back in bonus up to $50 on selected races every day. Points bet. On Weekend Sunrise, Fall House. Australia's holiday hotspots swamped, but we have the vacancy rates where you can get in before it's too late from 7am. Welcome back. Aussie captain Aaron Finch has claimed bragging rights with the first international century of the summer against India. It was a run feast at the SCG as Steve Smith and Glenn Maxwell joined in the big show as Australia cleared a total of 300 with ease. 259 days since the crowdless one day jolted us into lockdown, cricket returned to the SCG. Like an Indian home ground these days, but the new barefoot circle reinforces this is Australian turf. Coley versus Smith resumes. They honoured the Maverick Dino. Finch won the toss and straight out of quarantine. Shot. Warner and his skipper were away. A bash and wide of mid off. Despite a rude interruption by two anti Adani protesters, there was little trouble for Australia's great opening pair. At 4.08, they paused. Six years to the horrific, fatal day we lost Philip Hughes. Finch launched past 50, yet another century stand, but he should have been run out for 51. Coley. Can't believe it. Finch only added insult, they tick past 150 before a contentious dismissal of Warner on 69 and not out call overturned. India breakthrough. The luck changed for Steve Smith on 13. Close, yeah, that's close. Saved by a virtual coat of varnish. Oh, hang on. Smith took full advantage with some help in the deep. Should be taken and... Oh. Coley steamed. Smith found his hands all right. 50 from 36. Finch eased to his 17th one-day time. Beautifully played for the skipper. 
Just as India really unravelled, the captain fell for 114. If he drops this, it'll be something wrong. Only allowing Smith and Glenn Maxwell to launch an extraordinary onslaught. It rained sixes. That could be six, it is. 45 off 19 for the big show. Smith starts his summer with a knock that only he could play. Lost it over the offside for six more. Matt Carmichael, 7 News. The Stars are on the verge of following the lead of our other successful sporting teams when they face the Sydney Thunder in the WBBL final. Having achieved it all at international level, a WBBL title is the only thing that has eluded champion Meg Lanning. Yeah, it'd be really special to be able to, to get over the line. Definitely watching the finals in the past, I've been very jealous of, of those who have been involved and, and always wanted to, to be a part of it. The showdown is on 7 Mate tomorrow from 7pm. A beer in Noosa with Premiership teammate Jared Roughhead was the catalyst for James Frawley joining St Kilda. The former Hawks defender was destined to play club footy next year but now joins the Saints where his late uncle Danny played 240 games. Uh, he'd probably, probably come in and, and give me a headlock and then probably a punch in the arm and say, um, you've got a big name to live up to, mate. Uh, don't stuff it up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it's, it, it's an honour to be here. Frawley says the Saints are definitely a destination club following a raft of recruits in the last two years. And the son of a Saints fan favourite looks certain to be drafted into the AFL next month. Leaping team Jake Bowie doesn't have to go far for advice either, hoping to follow in the footsteps of his dad, Brett. Father and son, kick to kick, 12 days out from the draft. Jake Bowie started in Oz kick at the age of four on the very same ground. Sort of realised that about seven I wanted to play and wanted to compete, so yeah. just went to under nines and yeah, pretty much grew up here. His dad, Brett, was a St Kilda cult figure at 168 centimetres. What can the little fellow do? A lively rover who liked a celebration. He played 85 games at the Saints, just 15 short of father-son qualification. A bit flat now for the young bloke. Yeah, it would have been good to see him uh, father-son. Yeah, that would have been unreal, but I guess that's life. Jake's taller. 175, so got right, him covered. Okay. He's very lucky. It's not hard to be taller than me, though, so... And he's blessed with a large leap. Up there, Kazali. He played a lot of basketball as a junior and I think that's helped him with his leap, trying to dunk the ball. Jake inspired by a diminutive bulldog. Caleb Daniel a fair bit, just because he's a smaller player, sort of good kick and, yeah, it's been going well the last couple of years. So it's good seeing someone a bit shorter dominate the game. The growth on his lip not so short. Will it still be there on draft night? This is sort of a Movember thing, so it'll probably come off at December. Mark Stevens. Right. Seven News. Roy Jones Jr. has just two days to reconsider a very bad idea. That's fighting a rebuilt, revamped, but still seemingly insane Mike Tyson. Looking fit, the 54-year-old Iron Mike is taking the so-called exhibition I'm fight the very seriously. The conception of God. How could I not pick this opportunity up? A world champion, four different divisions. Jones is no slouch, but Tyson is firm favourite. In the Europa League, Tottenham's Harry Winks showed what happens when you pass to a teammate ends up to be too good. Watch it! Look at that! Absolutely freakish, but Tottenham have a third. He admitted after the 4-0 win, he didn't actually mean it. The world's greatest greyhound race is in Melbourne tonight with the fastest eight dogs in Australia competing for $630,000 in prize money at Sandown. Connections of Tommy Shelby will donate a portion of winnings to charity. If they come to life and you won the Melbourne Cup, it'd probably take a little while to sink in and, and become reality. It's, it's a big moment. It's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Coverage of the Big Melbourne Cup is on 7-2 from 7.30. Somebody connected with that dog is a big fan of Peaky Blinders, I would think, Mitch. Right. Uh, we don't often see the dish lickers on 7 News, so it's good to see. Thank no, you. no, I'd prefer to call them the greyhounds, actually. Greyhounds. <laughs> or flea taxis, some people call them unkindly. Don't be disrespectful to Thank the greyhounds. Thank you very much, Tim. Jane is next with the forecast. And, Jane, how does the weekend look? Well, Mitch, it does start hot before a cool change, then it's soggy on Sunday morning. The full outlook is next.
It's time to celebrate this year's end. What a crazy 12 months it's been. With a Christmas special so big it spans the nation. All hands on deck. We can do something beautiful. Two amazing and very Aussie makeovers. Wow. Packed with ideas. Terrific. Bringing colour to any home. I'm blown away. And festive ideas for a happy holiday. Christmas is shaping up to be pretty special this year. Join us for the Better Homes Christmas special next up on 7. Make more of the things you want possible with cash converters. Life made possible. <laughs> Bring home a little magic this Christmas. Help keep your energy costs down. Switch to Energy Australia on Total Plan and get a guaranteed Total Energy Bill discount. Plus, for a limited time, get an extra $50 off your first electricity and first gas bills. Join today. Look around as the favourites come out, it begins. Observing with an eagle eye, mastering the art of stashing. Oh, brilliant move, Grant. Cadbury favourites. Everyone gets their favourites. Black November in Sunday at Nick Scarly. We must clear our floor stock and discontinue lines. Lounges reduced, dining tables reduced, dining chairs reduced, and much more. Limited stock in Sunday. Black November at all Nick Scarly stores. Hurry. You've been stuck at home all this time. So we reckon you deserve a holiday. You deserve to stretch your legs. You deserve a little sun and fun. You deserve some chill time. A bit of thrill time. A bit of you time. You deserve to play through. You deserve a long lunch. You deserve a sleep in. You deserve to hang out. Yee! You deserve a drink. Or two. Victoria, you deserve some playtime. Hello again. Temperatures have jumped up in Melbourne and it's significantly hotter in other parts of the state. Here we started cool as 10, but it quickly shot up, finally peaking at a hot top of 36. There is plenty of sunshine mixed with areas of generally high base cloud. Today was our first 40 of the season, seen all through the Mallee as well as Horsham and Yarrawonga. Oyun hit 44, not far from the November record. A high to our east lets heat from the interior come down to us. A complex air of low pressure is on its way in, set to bring a cool change and some rain. The cool change works its way across southern Victoria, but the heat remains in the north tomorrow and grows more intense. Then by Sunday, it's all over. Cooler air sweeps through the north as well. The warmest we have is the high 20s, while parts of the south may even struggle to reach 20 degrees. That's as rain spreads through much of the south. After storms in the northeast on Saturday afternoon, the southwest sees the rain first. Melbourne is wet overnight into Sunday morning. Then it dries up on Sunday afternoon, so the rest of the state misses out. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney's turn for the heat, heading for 36. Their cool change later on Sunday. Hobart back down to 22, but Adelaide has the cool change around the middle of the day. 
to Victoria. Hot to very hot in the north and east with raised dust in gusty winds. Then a milder southwest change sweeps through. The risk of late thunderstorms about the northeast as rain develops behind the cool change in the southwest. That's late afternoon and evening. Looking closer at those temperatures in the northwest, 45 in Oyen, Swan Hill and Mildura. And this is exceptional. The state record for hottest November day is 45.8. We could have several records tumble tomorrow. These temperatures and wind conditions bring severe to extreme fire danger in the northwest. Total fire bans have been declared in three districts. Closer in and these temperatures do depend on when the cool change moves through. Essentially, it is hot until the wind turns southwesterly, which happens later on in the northeast. So it's hotter there for longer. We are dry all day, then rain develops around Geelong at night. In the city, it could reach 28 before the cool change drops it down into the low 20s. Dry all day, no rain until late at night around midnight. Now that leaves us with a wet Sunday morning and it's a top of only 19. 2 to 10 millimetres drying up in the afternoon, late sunshine. On Monday, back up to 25 in the sunshine, 28 on Tuesday. That's ahead of another cool change with showers. So it stays hot until the cool change rolls through tomorrow and it stays dry until late tomorrow night. Mitch. Thanks very much indeed, Jane. And that's the way it is this Friday, the 27th of November. Thanks for your company. We'll have updates throughout the evening for now from the Seven News team. Good night.